The Simpsons Treehouse of Horror, one of my favorite annual Halloween traditions, up there with sacrificing goats and newborns. So here is my ranking of every single Treehouse of Horror segment to date, which I'm sure everybody will agree on 100%. I'm, that's how the internet works, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Without further ado, starting with my least favorite segment at number 96. Bong Joon-ho's The Side of Parasite is the first segment of the 32nd Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Parasite. It's literally the same thing. The Simpsons get employed in a rich person's house, and then they take advantage of it. Then they find a secret passage and find out other people live in the house. And then everybody kills each other for some reason. Why does this exist? Why? I get that Parasite was popular last year. And it's a pretty great movie about class, about the nature of human beings, many deep things like that. It has nothing to do with a five-minute parody of The Simpsons. In fact, the plot is so complex that they focus on cramming it all into a short segment and forget to add jokes. It's unfunny and completely purposeless. Here's my favorite moment. My last words are, I'm too young and beautiful to die. Take a baby instead. In the Navy is the third segment of the 22nd Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Avatar. Now, there's few things I care less about than Avatar in the world, and especially Avatar parodies. This is the kind of Simpsons Treehouse segment that I hate, simply shitting out a parody of whatever trendy movie came out that year without any originality or purpose to it. This is your Halloween episode, why would you spoof Avatar? As a parody, it's unbearably unfunny, filled with obvious and childish jokes. I make fart jokes on the internet, and even I find this unwatchable. It felt like the later scary movies flicks, and those are worse than suicide. Here's my favorite moment. Yo, Colonel! Uh, you got some schmutz on your cheek. Where? Here? Skinner! You Gotta Know When To Gollum is the second segment of the 17th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of the 1915 German film Der Gollum. So Bart finds a golem and can make him do whatever he wants by writing a task on a paper and shoving it down his throat. Then the golem finds love. I couldn't care less for this segment. It is not funny, it's not scary, the plot is pretty boring. I don't care about the feelings of this clay monster. I don't even have feelings myself. For its short 7 minute runtime, it sure is a chore to get through. Here's my favorite moment. Oh. Skinner! I wish we'd been closer. Get him out of here, Willie. Dad? Dad? The Diving Bell and Butterball is the first segment of the 22nd Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of The Diving Bell and the Butterfly and also Spider-Man at one point. In this one, Homer becomes paralyzed and can only communicate with his farts. Then he becomes a superhero. What the fuck is this episode? What were they thinking? It's not funny and has no plot, just going from one unfunny gag to the next. Nothing works here. Bad parodies, bad jokes, boring plot. Here's my favorite moment. I'm on the floor. I can't move. So far a normal Sunday morning. Oh, the places you'll do is the first segment of the 24th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of The Cat in the Hat. What is the idea behind this? Taking the cat in the hat and making it about a psychopathic cat who's probably a pedophile too? You might see his name on an amber alert. It's just uncomfortable more than anything, and has basically zero jokes that work. Here's my favorite moment. Don't forget me! Bart and Homer's Excellent Adventure is the third segment of the 23rd Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Back to the Future, and not Bill and Ted. Whoa! In this one, Bart returns in time to stop Homer from marrying Marge so that he becomes rich. My life might be a hell of a lot better! 
But in the new timeline, Marge is married to Artie Ziff, that fucker. And then a bunch of homers try to beat him up, fail, and Marge loves them for some reason. I don't know if it's just me, but I kinda hated this episode. It barely has anything sci-fi going for it, nor horror. It's just loosely connected gags that don't work very well, with a forgettable, abrupt ending. I don't like it. Here's my favorite scene. Now to get my comic book and explore a world where no one's mad at George Lucas. When Harry Met Slimy is the third segment of the 30th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Guillermo del Toro's Shape of Water. In this one, Selma and Kang fall in love, just like in the movie. Now I have to be honest, I didn't care much for the Shape of Water, it just wasn't my thing, I guess. And this parody is the same, it doesn't do anything for me. I like Kang, don't get me wrong, and some of the jokes are okay, but the story overall kind of bored me. Here's my favorite scene. The Fright to Creep and Scare Harms is the second segment of the 13th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's not a particularly good one. Springfield becomes a gun-free town, and also completely defenseless, so Billy the Kid and his mates rise from the grave and fuck with them for a little while. Then there's a time machine. What's happening? Listen, the last bit of dialogue is this. Ha! Now to get me some caveman hookers! Caveman hookers? Really? That's your punchline? The satirical criticism of Americans and their love for guns is funny enough, but this is not the strongest segment. Here's my favorite moment. <laughs> <laughs> the bum stick on my bottom! Nightmare on Elm Tree is the second segment of the 32nd Treehouse of Horror episode, and is an original story that unfortunately has nothing to do with Nightmare on Elm Street. In this one, a tree comes back to life by getting electrocuted by lightning, and then it reanimates all the trees to kill people in Springfield. You know, it's kinda like that episode where a giant billboard ad gets struck by lightning and starts destroying the town with other advertisement properties. It's exactly that, except not funny and boring. I guess there's amusing death scenes here and there, but they mostly miss the mark here. Here's my favorite moment. Oh, Marge, I did a chore today. Which one? Unloaded the dishwasher all the way. <laughs> E.T. Go Home is the first segment of the 18th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of E.T. A pretty bad one. Bart befriends an alien, but turns out it uses him to build a portal and destroy the human race. So then humans arrive and destroy the alien race. What was the point of this? There's barely any good jokes. Everybody's an asshole, except for Bart who got betrayed by his best friend. Why not just stick with a simple E.T. parody? It's just a weird segment without a clear narrative or a clear purpose. Here's my favorite moment. Klotu Barat! Is that your space name? No, you hit me in my 700 testicles. <coughs> Freaks, No Geeks is the third segment of the 24th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of 1932's Freaks. It's about freaks from the freak show, rising up to their mean leaders and turning Homer into this thing in a bad How I Met Your Mother parody ending. And that, kids, is How I Met Your Mother. I mean, the aesthetic here is pretty great, and the plot is at the very least more developed than most Treehouse of Horror segments, but there's barely anything funny or entertaining throughout. Here is my favorite moment. Thrills. The Day the Earth Looks Stupid is the third segment of the 17th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of the War of the Worlds episode of the radio series The Mercury Theater on the Air. It was created by Orson Welles, that's pretty cool. In this one, Orson Welles creates panic in Springfield as they believe aliens are invading the Earth. Turns out it was a hoax, except oh shit, aliens actually come to Earth. Honestly, I don't give a shit about this segment. The slight amusement
amusement I find in it is when the aliens are destroying the town for a good 20 seconds. Before that, it's just boring. And after that, it's a commentary on the Operation Enduring Occupation led by President Bush. I, what? I don't give a shit about this. Here's my favorite moment. You know, Homer, we haven't actually seen these aliens. That's alien talk! Big Band Stu says 23 skidoo! Boom! Telepaths of Glory is the third segment of the 26th Treehouse of Horror episode. And it's a parody of Chronicle. You know that movie that everybody remembers from the great director of Fan Forstick? So, found footage style, Lisa and Milhouse get superpowers from a green goo, but Milhouse gets drunk on power for a second before he's stopped by Maggie, who also has powers. And then Kang and Kodos complain that they're just cameos. This is such an insignificant segment. A parody of a forgotten movie that barely has any jokes and that ends abruptly. Here's my favorite moment. Hmm, somebody misspelled Wiener. Heaven Swipes Right is the second segment of the 30th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of 1978's Heaven Can Wait. So Homer dies before he was supposed to, and therefore he's sent back to Earth from Heaven to live in the bodies of other people. Let's just say, G -G Ghost Dad was a much better segment. This one has bland, unfunny jokes and no stakes at all. It's literally just a collection of mildly amusing scenarios where Homer lives as somebody else. And it gets old really quick. Here's my favorite moment. And now to open my paycheck and see what I make. Duh? Next! Wanted Dead, Then Alive is the first segment of the 26th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's the episode where Sideshow Bob finally, non-canonically, murders Bart, and then reanimates him, only to kill him again, and again, and again. I wish there was something more to this. It's never quite funny, it's never quite entertaining, all the way to the not-so-funny ending. It's a fun premise, but gets old real quick. Here is my favorite moment. The deed is done. 24 years of trying to kill a 10-year-old child have finally paid off. Unnormal Activity is the second segment of the 23rd Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of Paranormal Activity. Homer gets a camera to record ghostly activities, recreating pretty much beat for beat the first movie. And then it ends with the demon making a deal with Homer to have a threesome with another demon in order to leave the family alone. Three way. The fuck? A bland parody of a movie I really enjoyed, with a horribly unfunny ending. I like haunted house films, so I was kind of biased on this one, but it could have been so much better. Here's my favorite moment. I'm right behind you, honey! We have stairs! Ow! Don't! Ah! Don't! Ah! Oh! God! What the? Ow! Oh! Ow! Oh! Oh! Yeah! Don't! Oh! Ah! Oh! Ah! Master and Cadaver is the second segment of the 21st Treehouse of Horror episode, and I don't care much about it. Homer and Marge go on a sailing trip and they find a guy stranded in the water. Then there's a bunch of twists and turns. Is this man a murderer? Or is he telling the truth? Etc, etc. The whole segment is simply boring for me. There's not enough laughs and the twists aren't intriguing in any way. The one thing I really liked that makes me not hate the segment as much as others is when Homer is murdering a bunch of people in various silly ways. No, no, come on. Just a second. Go! 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 Oh, oh. Bankers away! I love that. It's great. Everything else was bad, though. Here's my favorite moment. Huh. Oh, Roger. You really know what you're doing. <gasps> The Others is the third segment of the 25th Treehouse of Horror episode and is loosely parodying 2001's The Others. But ultimately, it's a doppelganger story. 
In this one, the Simpsons meet the Tracy Ullman Simpsons from the late 80s era, and then Homer falls in love with past Ghost Marge, so present Marge kills herself, and everybody just ends up committing suicide. I, I wish the plot was better, the idea is interesting, but the plot is both uninteresting and tasteless. It's just a suicide party, and even for my cold, evil heart, it didn't entertain me a lot. Here is my favorite moment. Mommy? I think we're not alone. I was sleeping in the dryer and got caught in your sheets. B.I. Bartificial Intelligence is the first segment of the 16th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of A.I. Artificial Intelligence. In this one, Bart is in a coma and gets replaced by a robot boy. But then Bart wakes up and he's jealous, and there's like a competition for who's the better son. And then Bart steals a bunch of robot parts and gets revenge. You'll have to go through your thoughts. Yeah, it's pretty jam-packed and never quite engaging. The story goes all over the place and nobody's really likable. Homer tosses his son out of the car and leaves him to die. And Bart whines the whole time because he's not the center of attention. The only thing I actually enjoy about this segment is the whole ending that has nothing to do with it. So here it is as my favorite moment. Dad! Dad, wake up! You're not a robot! You're just possessed by the devil. The power of Christ compels thee. <laughs> Intrusion of the Poddy Snatchers is the first segment of the 29th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. In this one, Springfield is overrun by plant-based body snatchers, pretty much. Now, this segment had the potential of being great, and it does have its fun moments, but then it becomes a criticism of smartphone addiction. iPod people, phone checkers, tablet gazers, never lifting your pedals to see the sun. Phone bad, phone bad. I don't care about the Simpsons giving me a lesson about my iPhone. I just want to have a good time. And it unfortunately didn't really deliver enough on the gags and the plot. Here's my favorite moment. Uh, Lenny, my phone says that there's spores from outer space landed all around us. Well, my phone says there are divorced moms in my area that want to meet me. Four Beheadings and a Funeral is the second segment of the 15th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of the From Hell graphic novel, as well as the movie. In this one, Lisa and Bart are detectives investigating different murders. Now, this segment is a misfire, in my opinion. It's not quite a good detective story, and barely has any jokes at all. The only thing it's got going for it is the beautiful aesthetic of 1890s London. It, you know, it's beautiful. Other than that, though, it's very forgettable and never quite funny. Here's my favorite moment. Let's see the suspect in that child abduction case. I shall never grow up! Uh, in jail you will. There's No Business Like Mo Business is the third segment of the 20th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of Sweeney Todd. In this one, Homer falls on these spiked thingies and his blood is used to make beer. Also, Mo is hitting on Marge, who now thinks she's a widow. Now, I'm not big on musicals, and I don't particularly care for this segment. It does have its moments, it's creative and well-made, and it makes sense, since Mo has always had a little something for Marge, don't we all? <laughs> I can recognize its qualities, and I can see why people would enjoy it, but subjectively, it's not my thing. Here's my favorite moment. Ow! Ow! Ah! Um, Marge? Dead Ringer is the third segment of the 32nd Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of The Ring. So, kids of Springfield watch a... TikTok. Marge, have you heard about this deadly TikTok? that summons a thing that kills them after seven days. Why does this exist? Parodying an early 2000 movie and adding modern TikTok jokes is a very strange idea. It feels too little too late. The jokes are obvious, like spoofing the phone call scene. Seven days. I can't hear you. Seven days. Maybe I better jot this down. 
What was your name again? It's just unoriginal. I like that the Samara lookalike would rather kill herself than be friends with Lisa, though. That's pretty funny. And at least there's a horror element to it. Here's my favorite moment. I killed Jerry and Larry. Danger Things is the first segment of the 30th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of Stranger Things. In this one, Milhouse gets trapped in the over-under, so Lisa becomes Eleven and goes on a rescue mission. Well, I like Stranger Things just like everybody else, but this parody, not so much. It felt like an obligatory spoof that had no soul. Wait, Stranger Things is the new trendy thing, so uh, let's just recreate it beat for beat and barely have any jokes in it. I wish this was better. It had some potential. Anyways, here's my favorite moment. Howdly doodly, neighborino! <coughs> Dry Hard is the first segment of the 27th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of The Hunger Games, only to become a parody of Mad Max at the end. So, as expected, kids murder each other, just like in the movie, and then they rebel against Mr. Burns, who owns all the water. It's a bit jam-packed, and none of the two parodies work very well. The ending also feels awkward, like they came up with it on the fly. There are a couple of okay gags here and there, but mostly it's just annoying parodies. Here's my favorite moment. What? What? What did I miss? Oh. Homerzilla is the second segment of the 26th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of Godzilla, at least for the first half, where it's very similar to the original Japanese classic, but then it becomes a satire about reboots and remakes, and it kinda lost me. I mean, either go with one or the other. There are some fun jokes here and there, and the Homerzilla creature is lovely, but the undisputed king remains King Homer, though. Here's my favorite scene. Dial D for Diddly is the second segment of the 22nd Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Dexter. A pretty boring one, too. So Homer pretends to be God and orders Ned to kill people for him. And Ned Flanders does so in various underwhelming ways, including a Looney Tune gag. Why? It's not the worst thing, I mean, having Ned play a Christian serial killer is really fun and all. But again, the writing is kind of poor. Everything feels half-baked, and it ends with God choking Homer to death. I don't, I don't care. Here's my favorite moment. Now I've gotta go! A hip-hop star is thanking me at the VMAs! Into the Homerverse is the second segment of the 31st Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. You guessed it, a bunch of Homers from other dimensions appear and they goof around. This is yet another parody of whatever movie was trendy that year, and it has nothing to do with horror or sci-fi. The Spider-Verse movie is great and hilarious on its own, it don't need a parody. I will say though, the different Homers were entertaining once in a while, especially Disney Homer. It wasn't unbearable, but it wasn't great either. Here's my favorite segment. Happy Halloween, old neighborino. Eat lead, Ned. I forgive you. Desperately Zeking Xena is the second segment of the 10th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of superhero movies and also Xena, Warrior Princess. In this one, Bart and Lisa become superheroes, and they go rescue Xena from the Collector, played by the comic book guy. I don't care much for Zeking Xena. The segment in itself is fun and well written for the most part, but it reminded me of just sort of a regular Simpsons episode, like the one where Homer becomes Pie Man. I prefer the Halloween specials to be sci-fi or horror related. Still, it's not terrible. Here's my favorite moment. Remember, you're vulnerable to kryptonite! Jeez, Marge, tell the neighborhood! 
The Genesis Tub is the second segment of the seventh Treehouse of Horror episode, and is a parody of a Twilight Zone episode, The Little People. In this one, Lisa accidentally creates life with her science project, and the life she created evolves and stuff, and then Bart crushes a couple of them, so they laser his face. Th this one doesn't do much for me. It's not spooky, it's not really funny. Bart is just an asshole. I mean, usually he's a fun asshole, but here he just commits genocide aside and has the time of his life. I don't know, I don't care for this. Here's my favorite moment. Shouldn't you people be groveling? <laughs> and bring me some shoes. Nice ones. She want socks too, I'll, I'll get socks. Transform... what? Trans... Jesus Christ. Untitled Robot Parody is the first segment of the 19th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of Transformers. In this one, Transformers fight each other in Springfield and then they team up to make humans their slaves. You know, my thoughts on this segment are as simple as the plot of this segment. Robots fight, and there's fun action here and there, but that's about it and I already forgot about it. Here's my favorite moment. Wait a minute, we're missing sex toy! Where have you been? Oh, where haven't I been? <laughs> A Clockwork Yellow is the second segment of the 25th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of A Clockwork Orange. In this one, Mo and his buddies do various criminal activities and stuff. It's like in the real movie, except the giant dick is a schmoo now. Not my schmoo! Not my schmoo! <laughs> the parody here is more faithful than funny, and it just made me want to watch the real film instead. But there is a fun, although somewhat lazy, ending, where it's just parody after parody of Kubrick movies. Mildly entertaining. It also ends with a great gag that also happens to be my favorite moment. Ow. Geriatric Park is the third segment of the 29th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World. So Geriatric Park is a place for the elderly to stay, but when Homer rises the temperature, they become dinosaurs. Yeah, this segment had fun dinosaur transformations, and having the dinos be old people was somewhat of a fun idea. I was entertained with Geriatric Park, it's not very memorable, and it probably would have been much better had it been made in the early years of the show, but you know, it ain't too bad either. Here's my favorite moment. I'll rejuvenate the elderly using untested dinosaur DNA, it could make me a fortune. Or fill the world with monsters. It could make me a fortune. <laughs> The Greatest Story Ever Hold is the first segment of the 23rd Treehouse of Horror episode and is not a parody of anything except for the title being a spoof of the Jesus movie, which has nothing to do with the segment. Anyways, Lisa finds a black hole and puts it in the basement to stop it from absorbing everything. But then the family uses it as a garbage, as we all would. The episode isn't horrible, it's just not very special. We've seen other Halloween segments with portals and other dimensions, and they were more interesting and funnier. This one is a fun time, but not to be remembered. Here's my favorite moment. I'm still proud of you, buddy. And look, I got money to take you for pizza. Yeah. You saw that I had the money, right? Queen Light is the third segment of the 21st Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Twilight that turns into a uh, vertigo at the end with Dracula. It's a strange one, but it's got plenty of fun gags and silliness. It starts with the obvious Twilight romance satire, and it ends with vampires sucking Homer's blood and dying of cholesterol overdose. Man, I had fun with it, but I probably won't remember it tomorrow, because I'll be dead. Here's my favorite moment. Well, he is cute, but I'm sure a boy like him would never say hello to me. Hello. <laughs> 
War and Pieces is the first segment of the 21st Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Jumanji. In this one, Bart and Milhouse are forced to play board games instead of video games, and they stumble upon a game named Satan's Path. It's pretty much Jumanji, and once they play, every board game comes to life. The game parodies are fun enough, with plenty of gags centered around the specific games, but that's about all there is to it. Not much of a plot, it's not very engaging, just some mindless entertainment. Hey, sometimes that's all you need. Here's my favorite moment. Come on, man, climb up! No, I might sink the letter, and Q is just too valuable! That blank can be any letter we want. Maybe I'm just tired of living. How to get ahead in advertising is the second segment of the 19th Treehouse of Horror episode and is not, to my knowledge, a specific parody. Except for the Mad Men intro that has nothing to do with the segment. And this one, Homer is hired to kill celebrities in order to use their likeness without having to pay. So besides from featuring a great Talking Heads track, this one doesn't do much for me. Granted, the concept is really fun, but the writing isn't there's a recurring joke about President Lincoln being gay. I guess they thought this was hilarious. The greatest part for me was Krusty falling in a wood chipper. That's fun. But after that, it kind of goes downhill. It's still much better than a lot of the bottom tier segments, though. Here's my favorite moment. Ah, you ripped me off, see? No, I didn't, see? You're gonna pay for what you done, see? <laughs> I always thought I'd die of hepatitis, see? Multiplicity is the second segment of the 29th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of Split. In this one, Lisa has a bunch of different personalities and she locks Bart, Milhouse and Nelson in a room. Again, I'm not a fan of Treehouse of Horror becoming a show where they parody whatever movie was popular that year, but this one is at least horror related and it has some fun moments. Lisa going crazy was entertaining enough, her massacre was great, and the ending is surprisingly sweet. It could have been worse. Here's my favorite moment. Come on, Millhouse, put your brain into it. The door isn't even scratched. Mm, we were trying to break the door? <laughs> In the belly of the boss is the third segment of the 15th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of the 1966 film Fantastic Voyage. In this one, Maggie gets shrinked inside a pill that Mr. Burns swallows. So the Simpsons need to rescue her by also downsizing and hanging out in Burns' belly. This segment has a fun concept and some neat visuals, but it fails to leave much of an impression beyond that. There's this recurring gag of Marge having a sexy outfit and nearly getting nude, and although she is a lovely woman, it was drowned out and never funny. It's fine for whatever it is. Here's my favorite moment. Captain! Science officer! Security! Marge! BFF R.I.P. is the second segment of the 27th Treehouse of Horror episode, and in this one, Lisa's imaginary friend Rachel kills all her friends so that they can be together again. How sweet. And then Homer's imaginary sausage friend fights her and explodes in a microwave. Well, as a later entry segment, this isn't the worst. It's an original story with fun death scenes and a somewhat interesting plot. It's not memorable in any way, but decent fun nonetheless. Here's my favorite moment. Think of me as your best friend. Dead and Shoulders is the second segment of the 24th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of The Thing with Two Heads. Bart gets his head chopped off, so he gets surgically attached to Lisa's body. Now, the strength of this episode lies in Bart and Lisa's hateful relationship, blossoming into love, and then back to being hateful. It was engaging in that regard, but the gags weren't anything special. I do like the ending, though. Here's my favorite moment. Well, now I always have someone to eat lunch with. Great! 
That's as much therapy as your parents can afford. Mr. and Mrs. Simpson is the second segment of the 18th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I don't know why, but I always loved that Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie film when I was younger. Weird, anyways. Both Homer and Marge are secretly assassins, and when they find out about each other's secret, they try to murder each other. And then they have sex over Chief Wiggum's corpse. It's a weird segment for a Halloween special, and it's got a strange ending, but I had decent fun with it. It's not hilarious, but there's some fun banter between the couple, there's some cool action, it does the job, and here's my favorite moment. Now I'm mad! Now I'm blistered! Don't have a cow, mankind, is the second segment of the 20th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a zombie parody, like a lot of other Treehouse segments. In this one, a crusty burger turns everyone into flesh-eating zombies. And turns out Bart is the chosen one here to bring a cure, by pissing in people's soup. Uh, Dial Z for Zombies was a much better episode, we'll get to it later on. And this one just feels like a, a poor attempt at making yet another zombie parody, but without anything better to add. I still enjoyed it though, it does feel spooky and all, and there's much worse segments out there. Any zombie Simpsons parody is always fun in my book. Here's my favorite moment. I can't shoot her! She's Lisa's godmother! You can apologize in hell! I guess I could! Heck House is the third segment of the 18th Treehouse of Horror episode, and I'm not sure if it's a parody of something, so let me know. In this one, Bart, Lisa, Milhouse, and Nelson pull pranks on the town on Halloween night, but then Ned teaches them a lesson by throwing them in hell. And uh, then they return to the real world, and that's about it. You already know what I'm gonna say, I love the spooky Halloween vibe of this segment. The prank scenes were great and they put me in that pumpkin spice latte mood. Their voyage to hell though, although filled with fun visuals, is kinda just a list of the seven deadly sins. I was expecting a stronger ending, but still had a blast. Here's my favorite moment. Oh, lighten up, it's Halloween! A night for mischief and merriment! And <laughs> <laughs> oh, still... Married to the Blob is the first segment of the 17th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of 1958's The Blob, as well as its 1988 remake. Personally, I find the King Size Homer episode to be much better and funnier, but it is still a delight seeing a fat Homer slob eating people left and right. It's the main appeal and the reason I enjoy this segment. The last couple minutes though, they really suck, and it ends with Homer eating the homeless to serve Springfield. That's your ending gag? Weird, it's not really funny. Here's my favorite moment. Must eat, then poop, then eat some more, then eat while pooping. Mowfinger is the third segment of the 27th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Goldfinger and Kingsman. So Bart becomes a secret agent taking his deceased father's place, but turns out Homer is alive and evil. <laughs> I'd usually be pissed at this because it has nothing to do with sci-fi or horror, and it's a double parody, which usually goes pretty badly. But, you know, this segment is really fun. There's some great action scenes, a great Donald Pleasance parody played by Homer. There's fun gags. I enjoyed it much more than I thought I would. Here's my favorite moment. Looks like this concert will have a few guests who weren't invited. Everyone's invited. It's free. B9 Rewind is the third segment of the 31st Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Happy Death Day and Groundhog Day and all of these films and shows that are becoming cliché. In this one, whenever Lisa dies, she wakes up and relives the same day. 
I can't say I'm too fond of the Happy Death Day movies, but a Simpsons twist on it was fun. Lisa dying over and over is somehow entertaining, and the plot was semi-engaging, and not bad overall. Here's my favorite moment. That's what I forgot to screw in. Frankenstein is the second segment of the 14th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of, well, what do you think? In this one, Professor Frink reanimates his dead dad, but Mr. Frink isn't happy with his body, so he steals everybody's organs and body parts. Hey, you can't have that. This episode had a lot of potential and partially delivered. It's great fun seeing Frankenstein ripping spines and organs out, but there's some duds with the jokes and the ending wasn't great. Still fun though, here's my favorite moment. <laughs> hey, 700 Club, you look like a healthy specimen. Well, I did finish first in the walk for the cure of homosexuality. Hell to Pay is the first segment of the ninth Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of an episode from Amazing Stories. In Hell to Pay, Snake the Criminal is sent to the chair, and his hair is used for Homer's hair transplant. But turns out Snake's hair controls Homer, which makes him go on a revenge spree against the people that caused Snake's death. Does that make sense? I feel like this was complicated. Anyways, this segment is middle of the road for me. Snake gets revenge, except in the body of Homer. And then at the end, the hair dies. That's about it. It's fun enough, it's got its moments, but it's also forgettable. Here's my favorite moment. These drugs will make the operation seem like a beautiful <laughs> dream. <laughs> ah. Oh. Cool as Hell is the first segment of the 25th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's an original story. In this one, Bart goes to a school in Hell, where he's surprisingly talented. This segment is pretty fun, especially the concept of it. Bart finally being a good student by torturing people in evil ways is a great idea, and most of the gags work. Hell also looks pretty damn good and hot. There's even a sweet father and son moment near the end, where Homer accepts to be tortured for his son's diploma. Oh, how sweet. Here's my favorite moment. There is no naked lunch, lady. Bart made it up. Yes, yes, uh, I knew that. <laughs> Whiz Kids is the third segment of the 12th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Harry Potter. In this one, you'll see Milhouse's ass, <laughs> oh. but also it's about Burns trying to capture Lisa in order to steal her powers. At first, Bart helps him, but then he feels bad, so he kills Burns and everything's good. WizKids has its moments, but as you know by now, I like my Treehouse of Horror episodes focusing on horror or sci-fi. A parody of Harry Potter is fine, but just not necessarily what I want in a Halloween special. Oh well, I still had a great time with it, it's fun. Here's my favorite moment. A plus, and we'll discuss your grade over breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Homer Cube is the third segment of the sixth Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of a Twilight Zone episode called Little Girl Lost. I assure you it has nothing to do with me. <laughs> so Homer accidentally enters a new dimension, the third dimension, dimension, and then people of Springfield try to help him. The episode seems to be more focused on strange experimental visuals, and granted, the visuals are very interesting. The whole story captures the strange, otherworldly feeling very well, and it even ends with Homer falling into the real world. That's fun. That being said, besides for a couple of funny lines here and there, Homer Cube didn't blow me away to another dimension. The plot is pretty much non-existent, Homer is just scared, and then he falls in a hole. Nonetheless, I did love the creativity behind it. Here's my favorite moment. Um, it's like, uh, did anyone see the movie Tron? No. 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 Yes. I, um, I mean, no. No. I know what you diddly idly did is the first segment of the 10th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of I Know What You Did Last Summer. 
In this one, Marge runs Flanders over, and the Simpsons then try to get away with murder. And then at the end, it's revealed that Ned is a werewolf, and he eats Homer. Weird twist, didn't see that coming. I know what you did last summer parodies are all over the place, and I usually have a good time with them. This segment has a good mystery, some great jokes, and a nice atmosphere. The end twist does feel like it's been pulled out of Homer's ass, but it still works overall. Here is my favorite moment. He's dead! He's definitely dead! Scary Tales Can Come True is the second segment of the 11th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of various Grimm's fairy tales, mainly Hansel and Gretel. So Bart and Lisa get abandoned in the woods, and an evil witch tries to burn them alive. But Homer arrives, becomes a fish chicken thing, and burns the witch. I enjoy Grimm's fairy tales, and a Simpsons parody of them is an entertaining idea. I don't think this is the most rewatchable one though. It plays out pretty much exactly how you would expect, except for Homer shitting out eggs. That was a surprise. The aesthetic is nice, I like the music, and Goldilocks gets savagely murdered. What's not to like about that? Here's my favorite scene. Is Suzanne ready yet? Almost, just give her another 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but the concert's at 8. Coral Lisa is the second segment of the 28th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Coraline. In this one, Lisa finds a tunnel that leads her to her other family, and automatically decides to join them, because her family sucks. I killed a snake with your saxophone. Can you blow its head out? Here, let me just wipe the blood off the mouthpiece. Buttons, please. Then there's some fun twists and turns here and there, and it ends happily. Yep, I got everything just the way I want it. I absolutely love Coraline, and a Simpsons parody was a fun idea. The animation is gorgeous, the plot is engaging, and although the end is a bit messy, I had a lot of fun with this segment. The talking cat played by the author of the Coraline book was especially great. For centuries, the cat has been the symbol of intelligence, the other world, savoir faire. Oh, shiny! Here's my favorite moment. What is it about this world that's so great? The horror in this world doesn't pass gas. That was a three-button job. Dial M for Murder is the first segment of the 20th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Alfred Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train. In this one, Bart and Lisa make a pact to kill each other's teachers for revenge. At least that's what Bart did, but Lisa thought it was just pulling a simple prank. So, Dial M for Murder is a very fine episode. It's a fun throwback to Hitchcock's classic, with a beautiful black and white look, and some fun gags. Not necessarily a classic, but a good time for sure. Here's my favorite segment. Lisa Simpson in detention? My horoscope told me I'd see something interesting today, but I thought that meant the horoscope itself. The Exorcist is the first segment of the 28th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of The Exorcist. Finally, a later entry segment that's a simple parody of a classic horror film. I love this one. Maggie as a possessed demon is great. There is a lot of surprisingly funny gags and a fun plot. In fact, every beat of the plot works well, from the possession, to the massacre at the party, to the actual exorcism. It was a lot of fun. Possessed Maggie even comes back in the next segment of the episode, where she throws up everywhere. <laughs> How fun. Here's my favorite moment. Cut her loose! Are you sure? If you can't trust a Catholic priest with a child, who can you trust? <laughs> Easy Bake Coven is the third segment of the 8th Treehouse of Horror episode and is apparently a parody of the American play The Crucible. Never heard of it, sorry. This one is set in the past, back when women were burned alive just for existing. So Marge is revealed to be a witch and, along with Patty and Selma, they go house to house at first wanting to punish people. We're here to eat your kids. But they end up getting candies instead. It's kind of like an origin story of the Halloween holiday. We should do this every year. Easy Bake Coven is a decent period segment with a nice aesthetic to it. It's got a pleasing Halloween vibe, witches and bitches, fun stuff like that. 
It does take a while before it gets interesting though, but it's still really good. Here's my favorite moment. Come on, give us some candy. Don't pretend you're not home. Dad, that's our house. Reaper Madness is the first segment of the 14th Treehouse of Horror episode, and in this one, Homer becomes the Grim Reaper after killing the Grim Reaper. Reaper Madness has a ton of memorable lines and moments, and it's a really good time watching Homer cold-bloodedly murder people just for the hell of it. The ending is a little meh in my opinion, but Grim Homer remains a great part of Treehouse of Horror. Here is my favorite moment. Would anyone like to see Mr. Simpson harvest a soul? You said something about a hot meal? <laughs> yeah! Fly vs. Fly is the second segment of the 8th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of The Fly. In this one, Bart enters a teleporter and comes out as a small fly with a Bart head, but there's also a Bart body with a big fly head. And then Bart tries to tell his family that he's alive and the fly is an imposter. Fly vs. Fly is decent, not excellent. I don't think it took advantage of the source material enough. All I want is a green vomit scene. But despite the lack of linear story, it's got some really fun moments. I mean, both Bart flies are great. They're really entertaining. Here's my favorite moment. So then Lenny says, as if. Don't even go there, sister. <laughs> Good one, Dad. Yeah, well, Lenny said it. G -g Ghost did the dad is the first segment of the 11th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of the 1990 movie Ghost Dad. In this one, Homer dies by choking on a broccoli. I mean, we've all been there. And in order to get to heaven, he must do a good deed. Thankfully, he succeeds. It's a miracle! But the angel guy wasn't looking, so Homer goes to hell. That's kind of funny. You know, Ghost Dad is a good time. It's not the most memorable segment, but it is well-structured, it has stakes, and Homer's clumsy attempts at doing good deeds only ends up killing people. That's really funny. It's got the charm of the good old Simpsons I know and love. Here's my favorite moment. Oh, scary newspaper. Don't hurt me, horoscope. I'm afraid of- Ow! Oh! Paper cut! Paper cut! Survival of the Fattest is the second segment of the 16th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of the short story The Most Dangerous Game. In this one, Mr. Burns invites people for dinner, but ends up playing a game where he hunts them and murders them. It's got some fun moments, I always love me a good evil Mr. Burns segment, and seeing all of the beloved Simpsons characters die horribly is quite entertaining. Here's my favorite moment. No fair. Dad gets to kill wild animals, but I shoot one bird and I have to go to a psychiatrist. Mm, he still thinks that hobo was a bird. Life's a glitch, then you die is the third segment of the 10th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of the whole Y2K phenomenon where people feared the year 2000 would fuck up computers and the whole world would be plunged into chaos. And, well, that's exactly what happens in this segment. I know it's horribly dated, but I still love it. It's a blast from the past, even though I was still shitting my diapers when it happened. That doesn't say much though, I still do that. Anyways, I love the sheer chaos of this episode. Everything related to technology is trying to kill everybody in Springfield. It's just fun. Dated, but fun. Here's my favorite moment. Well, look at the wonders of the computer age now. Wonders, Lisa? Or blunders? I think that was implied by what I said. Implied, Lisa? Or implode? Mom, make him stop. <laughs> Stop the World, I Wanna Goof Off is the third segment of the 14th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of the Twilight Zone episode, a kind of a stopwatch. In this one, Bart and Milhouse get a stopwatch that can stop time and use it to do stupid shit little kids would do with a magic time-stopping stopwatch. <gasps> My slacks, they've descended. 
That's about it for the whole episode, and it's a blast. Granted, it's not very Halloween-y, but the premise is really fun and the jokes work well, especially the visual gags. Here's my favorite moment. Yeah, I thought I'd be happy with my parents back together, but it's kinda hollow. I've grown a costume on your face is the third segment of the 16th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a loose parody of the Twilight Zone episode, The Masks. It's also got a bit of Bewitched thrown in there for some reason. In this one, a spooky witch casts a spell that makes everybody in Springfield become their Halloween costumes. The fun of this episode lies in the silly costumes turned real and it makes for some great visual gags. It's also got a great Halloween vibe and overall it's a very very fun segment. Oh! Not a big fan of the ending, but it's still a great time. Here's my favorite moment. This isn't fair. I wasn't wearing a costume. Night of the Dolphin is the third segment of the 11th Treehouse of Horror episode and it's a parody of a couple things. It's got Jaws, Free Willy, The Day of the Dolphin, even the birds. So basically, dolphins rise up and invade Springfield. So there's a war between humans and dolphins. No surprise there, humans lose. Although this segment could have easily been unfocused and all over the place, the various parodies actually mesh together pretty well. They make for a unique Treehouse of Horror segment. I love the chaos where people get murdered by adorable sea creatures and I enjoy the surprising amount of gore. It's my favorite segment of that specific episode. Here's my favorite moment. <laughs> Island of Dr. Hibbert is the third segment of the 13th Treehouse of Horror episode and it's a parody of the sci-fi novel The Island of Dr. Moreau from H.G. Wells. In this one, Dr. Hibbert plays the crazy doctor who turns people into animals, including a sexy Marge cat and a fat Homer walrus. The visuals here are great. I love the spooky, mysterious tropical island shaped like a skull. There is an effective mystery. Flanders gets milked by Homer, who wouldn't want to see that. Ooh. And although it's scarce on humor, it's still a very strong segment. Here's my favorite moment. House of Pain? This must be where you pay the bill. <laughs> Why am I always so funny when no one's around? <laughs> Citizen Kang is the third segment of the seventh Treehouse of Horror episode and takes place in the 1996 American election between Bill Clinton and Bob Dole. In this one, our lovely aliens Kang and Kodos capture the presidential candidates and they take their form to be elected by Americans. This one's great fun, but I am a Canadian who wasn't even born for this election back when it happened, so there's already a slight disconnect with the satirical political messages. I'm just a stupid poutine lover, eh? Still, I really like the amusing criticism of the hypocrisy of elections and the stupidity of the electors. In fact, the thing that works so well and the reason why so many people adore this segment is the writing and the humor. It's clever and got plenty of critical satire about America and stuff. Well, I believe I'll vote for a third party candidate. Go ahead. Throw your vote away. <laughs> <laughs> I admire that, but it didn't connect with me as much as other segments. Blasphemy. It's still really good, though. Don't get your panties in a twist. Here's my favorite moment. Abortions for all. <laughs> Very well. No abortions for anyone. <laughs> Abortions for some, miniature American flags for others. Yay! The Raven. The Raven is the third segment of the first Treehouse of Horror episode and is evidently a parody of Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Although, I'd argue that it's not so much a parody as it is just a faithful retelling of the poem. And this is why some people love it and some hate it. In this one, a raven visits Homer, says nevermore a lot, and drives Homer crazy. 
that's about it, just like in the poem. This is an odd one, as the focus is on the atmosphere and not so much on the humor. The segment is gorgeous, the animation looks fantastic, and the vibe greatly captures the eerie feeling of Alan Poe's work. It's essentially a very well-made homage, without much of the charm we know and love from The Simpsons. There's a little something that's missing, but it's still a very fun episode. Here's my favorite moment. Darkness there, and nothing more. Huh? You know what would have been scarier than nothing? What? Anything! Starship Poopers is the third segment of the ninth Treehouse of Horror episode and is surprisingly not a parody of Starship Troopers, just has a similar name. In this one, we learn that Maggie is actually Kang's daughter. This one is just silly, it's fucking stupid, and sorry, I kinda had fun with it. There's this ongoing rivalry between Homer and Kang, and then at the end, everybody punches each other, and Marge says, I'm so embarrassed. We also hear Maggie's first words. Let's go home. Very well, <gasps> I'll drive. <laughs> Completely fucking stupid, but surprisingly amusing for my dumb, immature mind. Here's my favorite moment. Insemination complete. Really? That seemed awfully quick. What are you implying? Nothing, nothing. Attack of the 50-Foot Eyesores is the first segment of the 6th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of the movie Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. In this one, giant advertising billboards come to life and wreak havoc in Springfield. It's a really fun concept, and allows for a bunch of great visual gags, like Mr. Peanuts eating people like peanuts, or a Kent Brockman billboard killing Kent Brockman. This one's fun. I always love seeing a bunch of innocent people getting murdered left and right, who doesn't? What I don't really like though is how the episode ends in a song. Yeah, they sing that crappy song to turn people's attention away. And by doing so, the monsters die. Meh, don't like the ending. But still, the segment is great. Here's my favorite moment. I want a colossal donut, just like the one on the sign. Go oh, nuts! Send in the clones is the first segment of the 13th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of the 1996 movie Multiplicity. In this one, Homer finds a magic hammock that creates clones of himself, so he uses them for his chores. I love me some Homer, so having 200 Homers acting like idiots is all I could ask for. There's even a Homer Griffin. It's fucking dumb and entertaining. I had a good time with it. Here's my favorite moment. It would take three clones to beat the original Homer. <laughs> I mean four. Oh, oh. sucker. <laughs> Springfield, an average little town with a not-so-average monster. The Bard Zone is the second segment of the second Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of a Twilight Zone episode called It's a Good Life. Essentially, Bart has godlike powers and he can read minds. Whenever somebody has unhappy thoughts, he punishes them in various silly ways. So the whole town is living in fear as Bart is having the time of his life. Then by the end it becomes a father and son relationship story and it ends in the most horrifying way possible. Homer loving his son. I love you, son. This episode is a good time, although it's not too special. I love the concept that Bart can do anything to anyone, that's fun. But then, once the Homer and Bart cheesy montage kicks in, I kinda lost interest. That said though, the writing is still much better than those recent Simpsons episodes, and it's a very fun segment. Here's my favorite scene. Oh good, the curtains are on fire! It's good that you made that awful thing, Bart. is the third segment of the 28th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of the Stephen King short story, Survivor Type, featured in the horror anthology, Terrors. This one is pretty straightforward. Homer accidentally cuts his finger, and it cooks on the barbecue. Mmm, fucking delicious. So he eats it, and then he becomes obsessed with eating himself. 
I love this segment. In fact, I, I love the entire 28th Treehouse of Horror episode. It's like the writers suddenly had a boost of genius before going back to mediocre. Mm, Homer is both disgusting and hilarious. The plot is great and makes sense with the character. It was only a matter of time before Homer would start eating himself. The segment is memorable and surprisingly original for a show that's been on for so long. It's a great Great dish. <laughs> Here is my favorite moment. There's a single morsel in the house. Monkey's Paw is the first segment of the second Treehouse of Horror episode, and you guessed it, it's a parody of Never Been Kissed, starring Drew Barrymore. Wait, no, no, it's a parody of Monkey's Paw. So Homer buys the infamous monkey's paw that grants wishes, but as expected, it backfires. Bart wishes for the Simpsons to be rich, but it also makes everybody hate them. Lisa wishes for world peace, but it makes Earth vulnerable to be taken over by aliens. Thankfully, Flanders grabs the paw and everything comes back to normal. This one's really fun. I have a soft spot for it since the monkey's paw short story is one of my favorite tales in the whole wide world. That said, I wish there was a slightly bigger focus on horror. The tale is instead pretty much just about how the Simpsons became sellouts and everybody hates them now. Another thing they predicted so well. Still, monkey's paw is a great segment overall and here's my favorite scene. Homer, where did you get that ugly thing? Well, you dead little shop right over. <gasps> On your way, it was over there. You'll be sorry. It's the Grand Pumpkin Millhouse is the third segment of the 19th Treehouse of Horror episode and is of course a parody of It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. In this one, Milhouse summons the Grand Pumpkin with his whiny tears. But the pumpkin realizes that humans eat the insides of pumpkins, so he swears revenge. This is one of the better treehouse segments of the most recent episodes. It starts as a fun Peanuts parody and then becomes a tale of a murderous pumpkin and a killer turkey. I love it. Here's my favorite moment. Are you looking for a particular part of my brain or... The Omega Man is the first segment of the 8th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of the 1971 movie The Omega Man, a film about a survivor of a global pandemic. Can you imagine? Wow. I don't get it. Anyways, in this one, Homer survives a nuclear bomb decimating everyone in Springfield. So he just has fun in Springfield where everybody's dead. But then, oh no, turns out there's a creepy mutant cult trying to kill him. It's like the anti-vaxxers! Big reveal, Homer's family actually survived and they convinced the mutants to accept one another. It's, you know, it's touching, man. Oh my lord, they're murderers. Omega Man is really fun. A good portion is spent just watching Homer being a dumbass in a deserted Springfield. And then it's the Simpsons versus the zombie mutants. It's overall simple and effective. And here's my favorite scene. Little Lisa! <laughs> Little Marge! And the rest! The Terror of Tiny Toon is the second segment of the ninth Treehouse of Horror episode and it's a parody of the 1992 movie Stay Tuned. In this one, Bart and Lisa get trapped in the itchy and scratchy cartoon world and the little furries try to murder them. I love this episode. Everybody loves the itchy and scratchy show, so a Halloween special based on that is a fantastic idea. They also play the cartoon element very well, using fun visuals and sound design. It's very creative and amusing. Here is my favorite moment. Hey, hey! Tonight I'm going to suck! Your blood! The Devil and Homer Simpson is a parody of the short story The Devil and Daniel Webster, which I never read. Is it good? I don't know. 
In this one, Homer sells his soul to have a donut. Now remember, the instant you finish it, I own your soul. But then he finishes it like an idiot. So Ned the Devil Flanders comes to take his soul. Then Homer spends some time in hell, which is definitely the best part of the segment, and then he has a trial where he is judged innocent, cause Homer already gave his soul to Marge. Oh, it's so cute. This segment is great just for turning good Christian Flanders into the devil. That's already pretty damn genius. But then Homer getting punished in hell is a big highlight. It even ends with Homer having a giant donut head and eating himself. It's a real good time. Here's my favorite moment. Dear Homer, I owe you one emergency donut signed Homer. Bastard! The Ned Zone is the first segment of the 15th Treehouse of Horror episode and is a parody of the sci-fi novel The Dead Zone, also the 1983 movie of the same name. In this one, Ned gains the ability to foresee the death of anyone he touches. The Ned Zone is great. Not only does it have Hans Molman getting eaten by alligators, but also an apocalyptic ending caused by Homer's stupidity. All around, just some funny gags, a fun parody. It's a good time. Here is my favorite scene. Yeah! Ow! Oh, there's the frisbee. <laughs> Hex and the City is the first segment of the 12th Treehouse of Horror episode and it has nothing to do with Sex and the City. It's actually about Homer being cursed by a gypsy, causing everyone he loves to either die or become a horrible monster. Hex and the City is pretty great, it's very nostalgic for me. For some reason, the 12th Treehouse of Horror episode is the one I watched the most as a kid. I don't know why. In any case, it's fun to see the Simpsons become cursed freaks in constant pain, and Homer just not giving a fuck and being a dumbass. But then, as icing on the cake, there's also a loving little leprechaun. What more do you want? Here's my favorite moment. <laughs> the perfect crime. Marge, I have to be in court next Tuesday. Ooh, look at them smithers. If I Only Had a Brain is the third segment of the second Treehouse of Horror episode and it's a sort of parody of Frankenstein. In this one, Mr. Burns captures Homer and uses his brain to create a Frankenstein-like robot. But Homer being Homer turns the robot into a lazy useless piece of shit. So Burns aborts the project and gives Homer his brain back. But then he gets crushed by his own creation, forcing him to be attached to Homer's body. What really makes this episode is Mr. Burns, hands down. Hello, look at me, I'm Davy Crockett. <laughs> this old man is hilarious and works perfectly as a mad scientist scooping up brains and having the time of his life. Just like we all do when stealing bodies, unless it's just me. While the segment is very light on plot, it does have fun moments and overall is great. Here's my favorite scene. Hello, an open grave. Smithers, get him out quickly. The stench is overpowering. Wait a minute, sir. That's Homer Simpson. Toy Gory is the first segment of the 31st Treehouse of Horror episode and it's a parody of Toy Story. In this one, Bart tortures his toys so they get their revenge by killing him and turning him into a toy. I enjoyed this a whole lot, more than I thought I would. The recent Treehouse of Horror episodes are usually terrible and therefore I was expecting a terrible parody with obvious jokes but instead got a creative, violent horror short. It was great. Here's my favorite moment. Homer, always put a paper towel over. It's wine time. The Thing and I is the first segment of the seventh Treehouse of Horror episode and the internet tells me it's not a parody of anything, but I'm kind of skeptical. I mean, it is really similar to Basket Case in many ways, I don't know. 
Anyways, in this one, Bart and Lisa find out something is living in their attic, and it's later revealed to be Bart's evil twin. But, other twist, turns out Bart was actually the evil twin all along, and they locked up the innocent twin. Oh, don't look so shocked. I thoroughly enjoyed the thing and I. It's exactly what I'm looking for in a Treehouse of Horror episode. We've got an actual plot and mystery. What the hell is this creature up there? We have pretty creepy scenes. This one in particular scared the shit out of me when I was younger. <sighs> <laughs> you got your fun jokes and a fun twist. Here's my favorite moment. Those ears caged up in here, why you've probably never even seen your own face in the mirror, have you? Here. <laughs> Bad dream house. <laughs> Bad Dream House is the first segment of the first Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of typical haunted house flicks, mainly Poltergeist, the Amityville Horror, and maybe a little bit of Shining too? As the first Treehouse episode, it's a pretty good one. The Simpsons move into a new house that was suspiciously very inexpensive, and soon enough, an evil force starts messing with them. The fun twist here is that the house would rather destroy itself than live with the Simpsons, because they're too annoying. Suicide jokes, I love them. It's a fun spooky little tale, very simple in execution, with mostly funny jokes and a nice atmosphere. Bonus points for the music, it's great. Here's my favorite scene. You didn't tell me it was built on an Indian burial ground! No, you did it. Well, that's not my recollection. Yeah, well, all right, goodbye. He says he mentioned it five or six times. Here is a special mention for the episode Halloween of Horror. So this is not a Treehouse of Horror episode, but just a regular Simpsons episode that happens to take place on Halloween night. Halloween at the Simpsons, what a classic tradition. Are you heading up to the Treehouse to tell three horrifying tales? Yeah, we're doing it next week. I'm dead serious when I say this might be the best Simpsons episode from the last decade. If you're craving for some more spooky Simpsons specials, then definitely watch this one. It's got great themes, great Halloween vibes, and I don't know, it's, I, I just fucking love it. I guess uh, here's my favorite moment. I'll just whistle a happy tune. Hungry Are The Damned is the second segment of the first Treehouse of Horror episode and it holds a special place in my heart because it introduced Kodos and Kang and also a third alien that never comes back. Anyways, I love these green fucks. This segment is a parody of a Twilight Zone episode called To Serve Man. And in this one, the Simpsons get abducted by aliens, and although they seem very nice at first, they suspiciously feed them constantly, fattening them up for a feast. Well, at least that's what Lisa suspects, but turns out they're just trying to be nice, and the Simpsons are just eating like pigs, so the aliens get offended and throw them out. Now, although I usually prefer the plain horror parodies, this sci-fi tale is really fun. There's a genuine mystery as to what's gonna happen to the Simpsons, the spaceship setting is fun and different, and these aliens are such an icon that they appeared in every single Treehouse of Horror episode to date. I love them. Here's my favorite scene. On this cable system we receive over one million channels from the furthest reaches of the galaxy. You get HBO? No, that would cost extra. House of Wax is the second segment of the 12th Treehouse of Horror episode, and it features HAL 9000 from 2001 A Space Odyssey, although the plot has nothing to do with the movie. In this one, the Simpsons get a future house with a nice robot doing everything for them. It sounds really great, but just like all of us, he's in love with Marge. Wait, it's just me? So he tries to murder Homer, but ultimately gets defeated. I've always loved this one. HAL 9000 is awesome, 
both hilarious but also really creepy. There's plenty of fun gags with the futuristic house, and it mixes sci-fi and horror very well. And Homer's brain sticking out is all I could ever ask for. Here's my favorite moment. Looking for this? No, not in there. King Homer is the second segment of the third Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of King Kong. Guess who plays the ape? <laughs> this one's a pretty faithful adaptation of the movie and follows pretty much every beat, from the ape getting captured, to him running amok in New York, to the infamous climbing of the tower. <laughs> Now, I'd usually be disappointed with how they just recreated the story without much originality, but the jokes here are fucking great. It's honestly one of the funniest episodes, and Homer the ape eating people left and right is great fun. I love it. Here's my favorite moment. It's a sweet trip to a candy shop where fun ones. <laughs> Time and Punishment is the second segment of the fifth Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of the short story A Sound of Thunder. In this one, Homer tries to repair his toaster, but it ends up teleporting him in the past. The thing is, every little tiny detail he changes about the past completely changes the present whenever he comes back. As long as I stand perfectly still and don't touch anything, I won't destroy the future. Stupid bug! You go squish now! So obviously, this is a damn fun segment, as it simply serves as an excuse to bring Homer to various over-the-top universes, where everything's fucked up. It's similar to that Family Guy episode with Stewie and Brian. Anyways, it's a simple idea executed very well, and it's got a ton of memorable lines. Here's my favorite moment. Dad! Your hand is jammed in the toaster! What? Yeah! <laughs> Bart Simpson's Dracula is the third segment of the fourth Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of Bram Stoker's Dracula. In this one, Mr. Burns is a vampire, and when the Simpsons get invited for dinner at his place, Lisa and Bart find out the truth. Whoops, Bart's a vampire too now. So the family kills Mr. Burns, the head vampire, but a uh, plot twist, turns out Marge is actually the head vampire. That's about it. Well, I do have a life outside this house, you know. I really enjoyed this one as a kid, because I'm a huge fan of gothic, spooky atmosphere, just like this one. Nowadays, I'm just an old, grumpy fuck, but I still love this segment just as much. Burns as Dracula is perfect, Bart the Bat is really fun, and Homer stabbing Burns in the crotch is the cherry on top. Uh, Dad, that's his crotch. <laughs> it's got great ambiance, humor, story, spookiness. Here's my favorite moment. The only way to get Bart back is to kill the head vampire, Mr. Burns! Kill my boss? Do I dare live out the American dream? Terror at five and a half feet is the second segment of the fourth Treehouse of Horror episode. It's a parody of a great Twilight Zone episode called Terror at 20,000 Feet. And in this one, Bart finds out a creepy little gremlin is running around the bus, tearing it apart little by little. So Bart tries to tell everybody, but they don't believe him. Happy ending though, the little shit falls down and gets adopted by Flanders. I live home, Bart! <laughs> oh shit. This episode works on every level. The animation and the atmosphere are top-notch, I love me some stormy, spooky setting for a horror tale, and also, I love horror films that have school bus scenes in them, like in Nightmare on Elm Street 2. I don't know why, it's just a thing with me. Anyhow, this segment has a great plot and some surprisingly effective tension. <laughs> while also keeping the silly jokes here and there. 
bonus points for the adorably creepy little gremlin. I love this guy. Here's my favorite scene. Ooh, I hope this is sweat. Clown Without Pity is the first segment of the third Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of a Twilight Zone episode called Living Doll, as well as a little bit of child's play thrown in there. So Homer gives Bart a Krusty the Clown doll for his birthday, but turns out the doll is evil. It tries to kill Homer, but everything gets resolved when they realize that the doll had been set to evil mode. Yep, here's your problem. Someone set this thing to evil. Funny enough, that shitty Child's Play remake just copied that plot. No surprise there, I love this segment. I'm a big fan of creepy household objects coming to life, and this one greatly balances horror and comedy, with one great joke after another. I just want attention. Here's my favorite moment. But beware, it carries a terrible curse. Ooh, that's bad. But it comes with a free Frogut. That's good. The Frogut is also cursed. That's bad. But you get your choice of topping. That's good. The toppings contain potassium benzoate. That's bad. Can I go now? Dial Z for Zombies is the third segment of the third Treehouse of Horror episode, and it's a parody of zombie movies. In this one, Bart finds an occult book and casts a spell that brings dead people back to life. This is my favorite kind of Treehouse of Horror segment. There's an actual spooky story that fits perfectly for Halloween, there's an actual plot, and, of course, a bunch of great jokes. I love the ambiance, and it even has a little critique of society becoming brain-dead zombies absorbed by entertainment. Well, I'm sure glad we didn't turn into mindless zombies. Shh! TV! <laughs> Man, fall down. Funny. Mm. Overall, a great segment that I love very much. Here's my favorite moment. <gasps> Dad, you killed the zombie Flanders. He was a zombie? Nightmare Cafeteria is the third segment of the fifth Treehouse of Horror episode and is apparently a parody of the movie Soylent Green? I haven't seen that. Anyways, in this one, the cook doesn't have enough food and there's way too many kids in detention, so the teachers find a solution by turning these kids into delicious meat. Problem solved. Right off the bat, I love school-themed horror stories. I feel like there should be more of those. Nightmare Cafeteria reminds me of a book from the French series Pas Pearl. It's basically like Goosebumps, except you choose your own adventure. There's this one book called Cannibal Teacher, and it's great, just like this treehouse segment. It makes me nostalgic an awful lot. It's an episode that's both hilarious, but also kind of disturbing when you think about it, and I would watch it on repeat when I was a kid. It remains one of my all-time favorite episodes. It has this classy, spooky premise, blood, gore, and funny jokes. What the fuck more do you want? Here's my favorite moment. Reported attention, Uter. For how long? Oh, about seven minutes a pound should do it. Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace is the second segment of the sixth Treehouse of Horror episode and is evidently a parody of A Nightmare on Elm Street. In this one, caretaker Willie gets burned alive, so he swears revenge on the school kids. In their dreams! It's no secret that I love A Nightmare on Elm Street. It's one of my favorite movies of all time, and it's mainly what got me into horror in the first place. So of course, I love me a good parody, and this one is perfect. Every joke works. Wheel him out quietly. It's best the children don't see him. The dream sequences are beautiful and creative, the writing is great, the music has really nice nods to the Nightmare score. Overall, Nightmare on Evergreen Terrace brings back some good memories and is one of the very best Treehouse of Horror segments. Here's my favorite moment. Ah! Bart! Is that you? Yes! Take out the garbage. <laughs> At last, we've come to the end, my favorite ever Treehouse of Horror segment, The Shinning. 
The Shinning is the first segment of the fifth Treehouse of Horror episode, and I mean, I don't think this is a surprise to anyone that I put this at my number one spot. I think pretty much everybody agrees that this is the greatest Treehouse segment ever, and just one of the best episodes overall. It also holds a very, very special place in my heart because I saw this when I was sick as a kid and missed school. Instead of learning math and wanting to die, I instead learned to love horror, and it even made me read the Shining novel, which in turn eventually led me to watch the Kubrick movie. I think I was nine back then and got emotionally scarred. That bath lady is still creeping me out to this day. But anyways, this parody goes pretty much as you'd expect. The TV doesn't work and there's no beer. So just like we all would, Homer goes nuts and wants to kill his family in exchange for beer. I'll kill you! I'll kill all of you! You know, The Shinning actually spooked me when I was young because of this scene. It's still pretty creepy, right? Or maybe I'm just a loser. But the segment is also filled with hilarious jokes. It is so memorable, an absolute classic, and in my opinion, the best Treehouse of Horror segment of all time. Here's my favorite moment. If your dad goes gaga, you just use that shin of yours to call me and I'll come a-running. But don't be reading my mind between four and five. That's Willie's time. And just like that, we went through all 96 Treehouse of Horror segments. I haven't slept in days, I just wanna die. I hope you enjoyed this, have a great spooky Halloween. You guys are the king to my kodos. I love you, bye bye. <laughs>